Hey y'all, welcome back to Oprah Rocks. I'm Craig. We are in the lapidary lab today, and what we are going to be doing is a little how-to video. I'm going to be showing you how I stabilize rocks. So I'm going to be using the vacuum chamber and cactus juice method. Now, cactus juice you can find online if you go to turntext.com. They are the manufacturers of cactus juice. They have some excellent how-to videos, a frequently asked question section, things like that. So I'm going to be showing you how I do it, but if you ever have any questions, always default back to the manufacturer. They're going to be your best bet if you ever get yourself in a little bit of a pinch and you have some questions. So I'm going to be stabilizing some Wisconsin Moonstone and some Orbicular Rhyolite. Now these types of rocks, they tend to be fracture prone, also a little bit softer. The Rhyolite is just a little bit softer and it tends to fracture a little bit. I really want to get a nice solid base that I can work with and I can make some cabochons out of. So this stabilization method I've found to be the best method out there. I have tried several others, but they just don't work as good as I'm going to show you what equipment I'm using, and then I'm going to show you the PPE that you're going to want to use while you're doing this, and we will go from there. All right, let's get started. This is the equipment that we're going to be using today. So first and foremost is going to be the vacuum pump. You're going to want to get yourself a good, high-quality vacuum pump. I went with JB Industries as a recommendation from the founder of Cactus Juice, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, JB has been around in the business for several years. All of their vacuum pumps are serviceable. You can find parts for them if it would ever fail on you. They do sell vacuum pumps and vacuum chambers on like Amazon, but you know they're just not well built. They come from China. They're going to break on you. You can't service the vacuum pumps. The vacuum chambers don't get a real good seal. So you just want to make sure you're doing your due diligence before you actually purchase your vacuum pump. Now, they are a little bit expensive, but if you look out on eBay or if you look on Marketplace, you're going to be able to find one that is within your price range. Next item here is a very important piece, obviously, that is going to be the stabilizing resin. So we're going to be using cactus juice, and this is made by Turntex out of Texas. I'm going to drop a link so that you can go check out their website. They have a lot of valuable resources on the website. And uh, the founder is a really great guy. We were talking rocks one day, and we started discussing stabilizing, and that's where this all led to. So this is also where I have bought the vacuum chamber. This is some very, very high-quality made vacuum chambers. So the one that I have here is a 4 by 10 inch vacuum chamber. Comes fully equipped, ready to go. You can just tell that it's built with quality when you hold the thing in your hands. So you got to go to Turntex and check them out. Then we have the final piece of equipment that we're going to be using, and that is going to be just an inexpensive toaster oven. I actually picked this one up at Goodwill. So any sort of toaster oven is going to work for you, as long as it can hit between that 180 to 200 degree range. One thing you want to remember when you're looking at toaster ovens is never trust the dials on these things. It can say 250, but it, I guarantee you it's not going to run at 250 degrees. So you're going to want to get yourself an oven thermometer that you can put inside of the toaster oven. Two most important pieces of PPE that you're going to want to use today are going to be just a general pair of safety glasses so know that resin splashes into your eyes. And then an obvious one is just gloves. I use nitro gloves. You're going to want to use these. It's just best practice for handling any chemicals. I'm also going to be using a respirator, and that's just because although I have ventilation in the shop, it's not the greatest. So I just want to make sure that I'm being safe. So when I start to cure the rocks, it is going to get off a little bit of an odor, as well as when the vacuum pump's running. It's it's when the oil starts to heat up, you're going to get that oil smell, and I just I just don't like the smell. It's not necessarily hazardous, but I just I'm not a fan. So I'm going to be wearing a respirator when I'm around the equipment when it's running. So here's a look at the rocks that we're going to be stabilizing today. Um, I have them pre-laid out in the tray just so I know that I'm going to have enough room for them inside the toaster oven. But we got uh, just a little bit of a mixture here. We got a bunch of uh, the Wisconsin Moonstone. Then I have a couple pieces of Orbicular Rhyolite over here in the red. And then another piece of Orbicular Rhyolite in the black. This is I'm pretty excited about this batch. This is going to be a good one. Let's get to the process underway. One thing to remember when you're doing this is that your vacuum pump is going to be throwing off some heat, so you're not going to want it too close to where the resin is so that the resin prematurely sets up on you. So I have the vacuum pump over on a table here, and then you can see about five feet away, I have the vacuum chamber. And this is where we're going to start loading up the rocks, put in the resin, and then we're going to get the vacuum process underway. All right, we have the rocks all set here. I'm going to start loading them into the chamber.
Next up, we're going to want to load the cactus juice. So I have some cactus juice from one of the last projects that I did. That's the good thing about it is you can reuse it as long as it's not contaminated. So I'm going to pour that into the chamber. I'm going to want to make sure that the rocks are fully submerged. Looks like I had just enough for this batch. Awesome. There, the rocks are fully submerged. Now we're gonna start the vacuum process. We're gonna to wanna to start with the valve fully open here, just so we can slowly build up vacuum pressure. So I'm gonna head over here to the vacuum pump. We're gonna get this started. I have the line open, all good. So we are ready to start this process. So now I'm gonna slowly close this valve and apply a little bit of pressure to the lid so we can start to build up a vacuum pressure. Okay, so now the valve is fully closed, so I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure here, and that's going to help get the vacuum underway. So as you can see, the gauge is starting to rise, getting a nice seal. There we go. Now we got a perfect seal. Now the process begins. All right, so there we go. Now we got a really good vacuum seal. Uh, as you can see, it's just pulling the air out of those rocks. Well, we're gonna wait about two to three hours is what it should take until the bubbles stop. And then once the bubbles stop, we're gonna release that vacuum pressure. And from there, it's gonna suck all that resin inside of the rock and we're gonna begin the soaking process. We will check back in about two to three hours. Okay, well, four and a half hours have gone by and the bubbles have finally stopped. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a good little rock here, back and forth, get any of those trapped bubbles out of there. And now I'm gonna release the uh, vacuum here. So I'm just gonna do it real slowly while keeping the vacuum pump running. Uh, you definitely don't wanna turn off the vacuum pump before you do this step just because it's gonna end up spitting water and oil all inside of your chamber the next time that you use it. So let's release this pressure. Nice and slowly. There we go. Now we can turn the pump off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lid off of this and we are going to let it sit and suck in all of that resin for probably about another six hours. All right, the soak period has ended. So now it is time to prep the rocks for the toaster oven. So we're going to want to dump out all of this remaining resin. And again, we can reuse this. So we're gonna keep that resin just in the refrigerator. We don't have to put a cover on it or anything like that. Try to get it all out here. And now I'm just gonna transfer over the rocks uh, to a piece of paper towel temporarily until I can get them loaded into the toaster oven. Okay, so now I'm just loading the rocks into the toaster oven. I keep these little bamboo skewers in here just so it's slightly raised off the bottom of the tin foil and it's not just directly contacting the tin foil. I did preheat this a little bit just to keep it warm, but we're gonna wanna get this raised up and we're gonna wanna keep the temperature right around 200 degrees. The internal temperature of the rocks need to hit 200 degrees in order for the resin to set in. We're gonna get that started. We're gonna keep an eye on the temperature using the uh, oven thermometer here. And I am gonna turn this on to probably, I think 350 gets me around 200 in this particular toaster oven, but we'll keep an eye on that temperature and we'll check back on it and make sure everything's going well. All right, everything's looking good. Temp went a little bit over 200, which isn't a bad thing. I just turned it down just a little, slight little bit. Everything seems to be progressing perfectly. Now it's not a must or anything, but I do, 
clean out my vacuum chamber with a mild detergent, uh, Blue Dawn to be exact, and just some uh, cool water. I just like to keep everything in good tip-top shape for next time. All right, the time has come and I am taking them out of the toaster oven. All done and ready to be cabbed up. And there we have it, the finished product, the fully stabilized Moonstone and Orbicular Rhyolite. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like after it's done, check that out. This is Moonstone. This was just a previous piece that I had stabilized and shined up as a tester. Pretty awesome. Well, there you have it. That's how I stabilize rocks using the vacuum chamber method. So I hope you enjoyed this how-to video, and we will see you next week on another rock hunt. Have a great day.